Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of Spectrum of the Arts. Today we're going to highlight an annual happening in Pinellas County, the series of all county music fest presentations. We will see art teachers presenting and receiving instruction from trainers and peers about the many uses of iPad applications. And we'll take you to Gibbs High School for the background and the dress rehearsal for Four Little Girls. Another year of Pinellas County Schools presentation of the All County Music Fest has come and gone. The shows presented at different venues around Pinellas County don't just happen. They are the culmination of a long process that includes auditions and rehearsals that lead to the big day, or night as the case may be. The students have to go through an audition process. What the um, teachers do is they tell the students that about the auditions. They're given um, excerpts of music. They have to know scales and they have to be able to do some sight reading as well. And then they audition in front of a judge and then the judges make the decision on who scored the highest and then those students are invited to perform in the all-county concert. The main goal in having all county for these students is for those high excelling students to give them a, an, an opportunity to be accelerated and to have that extra rigor and see what it's like out there in the community of their peers and just getting to make music together. The excitement builds for elementary students, some of whom find it hard to believe that they have been selected to be part of it. I, I was I was excited first when I when I was like when they picked me and I was like oh my gosh out of, out of all the people that actually rehearsed I was like I can't believe I was going to be picked. It feels like an honor to be picked to be in this all-county chorus and I feel very excited to be a part of it. It's really cool because there's so much talent here and I'm really excited to be picked to be one of the people singing here. The common theme throughout the process is the love of music and the growth the experience provides. I got involved in chorus in All County because I loved to sing and I sang in fourth and fifth grade and I just wanted to continue and get better. I think All County teaches you, like it teaches you to be well-rounded and it teaches you life skills, whether you're reading music or just meeting people in general, it helps you to be more social. It teaches you different techniques, like when you're sitting next to somebody else, you might hear something they do and it might help you with either, either pronunciation or just the pitch in general, and it helps with the other teachers as well. While social growth and working with a wide range of talent is exciting, 
the impact of invited clinicians from other areas also has a lasting effect. Well, this is such a great experience for the middle school students. First of all, they're coming together with students from all over the school district that they've never met before, so they're making new social connections, new musical connections. They're also working with guest clinicians that we're bringing in. We're very lucky this year to have Mr. Ian Schwint with us from Titusville High School, so our students are getting the chance to work with a really kind of rock star in our field. He's a master teacher, and they're really getting a lot of insight from him. They're working on really challenging music, so they're learning new concepts and putting them into a, an advanced setting, and they can bring them back to their classrooms and, you know, help help their neighbors around them and so all of our band programs continue to, uh, to improve. It's already better. It's already better. Well my goal is that first of all we just come out of this weekend loving the music that we're working on and that we hopefully pick up some ideas and tips and tricks to make music even better as we continue our musical careers after this weekend. So easy sometimes to do mindless repetition and I feel like if we don't challenge the students to get better every time they won't get better any time. So it's always a push of make mistakes, make lots of mistakes, just don't make that same mistake ever again. What are you going to do to make it better the next time? The benefits of music education are well known. These students here in our All County experience are making new social connections with those around them, a lot of academic connections with the tracking and the predicting where the, the rhythms are going to fall in time. It's also just a sense of they're creating something that doesn't exist if they're not doing it. And that's one of the greatest things about this All County experience is this is the only time this specific group of students will ever be together. So they're really creating something that would never happen in the world if it weren't for these students here doing it together. High achieving students are brought together with basically the same goals, to learn, to perform, and to enjoy. It's really a great experience being a part of the All County Chorus. I mean, you get to meet so many new people and it's such a diverse range of pieces that you get to sing. It's really awesome. The biggest thrill for me is performing and sounding good and like making, making music with friends is just a really good experience. All County to me is really awesome. It helps me make friends. It helps me um, improve my singing, so. One of the other big benefits of this is they get to meet a lot of college directors. This year, Dr. Kara Tasher from the University of North Florida is coming in. So they get to also see what the next level of, of teacher looks like, people with doctoral degrees and, and people that are able to um, answer some of their questions about college, but also challenge them on a level that sometimes they might not get in their high school classroom. Uh, music's absolutely essential to our education process. I can't think of another, especially choral singing, I can't think of a better activity to teach students um, to work together, to teach students leadership skills, um, to build empathy, which I think is sorely lacking in our community these days, to, to allow them to come together as a community, to build empathy for each other, um, and to express themselves in a way that's absolutely unparalleled in any other field that I know of. Some students, all county has been a dream. A dream that has come true with many positive results. My all county experience has been led over five years and it's so great to see them starting to add wins. It really provides our students with a wonderful opportunity to perform with students from other schools to work with wonderful clinicians. Um, in sectionals as well as full rehearsals. It's just really just really satisfying because you get to see the progress from the first rehearsal all the way to the final concert in just a few short hours so it really shows I think the hard work and the dedication of the students. The music education is one of those really special subjects that's close to my heart because it's a way that we can connect, connect with people on a nonverbal way, emotionally, um, communication-wise, and also to have that shared experience, especially in the ensembles, orchestra, band, choir, where everyone can come together and really just share their passions and strive for a final, final ultimate goal.
sound of the big band. Music provided by talented ninth and 10th grade musicians is always a highlight. Raina Pizarro, I play clarinet. It's been a challenge, but it's a good type of challenge. Hannah Carricker, euphonium. I just thought it was like a really unique experience. You go from like your own environment and like your own like band, and then you get to go and be with like a whole bunch of different people who especially are talented in their band. Kristen Brewer, I play French horn. With band practice and learning music, it helps with time management and just responsibility, like having to learn everything. The all-county band process exposes them to guest clinicians that are from the state of Florida and throughout the country and brings them uh, world-class conductors and educators and teachers uh, to work with them and they get that experience to, to be at a, uh, at a phenomenal hall. The 11th and 12th grade band once again presented a splendid performance that drew high praise from those in attendance. I'm Allison Holloway and I play the French horn. All County is a great experience for me. This is kind of like our home honor band where people from around the county get to come together to play this awesome music that you wouldn't normally get to play in your own ensemble. My name is Paige Zebley. I play tuba. I have the amazing privilege of being exposed to new music, new people. Uh, I always make new friends. I'm exposed to new clinicians and different ways of playing my instrument. My name is Jeremy Burdish and I play French horn. To me, it's a great chance to play with other people from around the county, play on a higher level, and I think it's a wonderful opportunity for some just great music to be made. As a band director and a music educator, we uh, get the opportunity to uh, be exposed to and learn from uh, great teachers and directors from all over the country. And it's a way for us to uh, uh, see what they're doing with their students and their approaches and methodology. What they, what they bring to the podium uh, that we can take back to our classrooms and, uh, and teach our students um, within our programs. All County Music Best Performances will be aired on WPBS TV 14. Please check our website, www.wpbs.tv, for time and dates. Did you ever wonder how teachers get so smart? Well, there's an easy answer. They work hard for it. For example, our teachers are obviously blessed with some talent. 
that some of us just don't have. An example? Can you draw a straight line? Well, maybe that's not a great example. But the point is, while they have a native talent, they are constantly having to improve their skills through the many training courses provided by Pinellas County Schools. Here's a look at one of the sessions involving some PCS art teachers. County K-12 through art educators came together for an iPad art teacher training refresh after using their new technology at their schools with students. They shared strategies on how they use their teacher iPads for instruction, demonstrations, documenting and sharing student artwork. You know, so you can see, you know, that I'm showing the lesson. Um, I don't like my face in it, so I do the down. Um, if you want to know how to do it, she had told me to set up a box next to wherever you're working. So there's like a, there's a probably a big, you know, box right here. And then I've got my iPad on the top kind of like hanging off. If you need to counterweight it a little bit to keep it steady, then you can do that. Um, and then you drop it into iMovie and then you can cut it. You can pause it. Or yeah. Yeah. This unique program is offered to interested art teachers in the district and meets twice a year to focus on the latest technology use. Thanks to the referendum, cutting edge trainings and newer technologies are available to Pinellas County Schools teachers and students. Black History Month was recognized at Gibbs High School with a special student presentation of four little girls. The production was written and directed by PCCA guidance counselor, Dr. Cody L. Clark. History was brought to life by and for Gibbs students, as well as the general public. The play performance was based on facts surrounding the 1963 church bombing in Birmingham, Alabama, that caused four young girls to die. The synopsis of the show is it's pretty sad overall to try to tell a great truth uh, you may have to deal with what was there. And uh, so the synopsis is the four girls, and they were in Sunday school, and they were getting ready for the church service that day, and the bomb happened. The so students learn long before you see the production. You know, I, the makeup artists, for example, what they learned when they saw pictures of the autopsy of the four girls, uh, when the makeup artists, which are all students, looked at, um, when they looked at the autopsy, you could see, and, and Miss Kelly was wonderful with the students, to steal them, to make sure that they understood that it was the history, and at the same time, to with reverence, uh, help the students process how very awful it was to throw a bomb in a church and kill these four girls. It, it, you, can't, you can't beat that with a textbook, you know. This, the experience makes it worth it. So that, that happens right away early in the show, so people know the story, I try to go ahead and get over that. But what I'm hoping that they see, which is the real lesson, is the combination of all people who work together to cause rights to occur to all kinds of people. In the show, The Four Little Girls, I play Cynthia Weasley, which is one of the oldest girls in the show. She's 14 years old and she lives in Birmingham, Alabama. September 15, 1963. 16th Street Baptist Church, Birmingham, Alabama, Youth Sunday. I learned of the things that happened in the past, the history behind the incident that happened in the church. It's showing what happened and about them like you know coming back to life as angels i think it's a really good performance there's a lot of stuff going on there's singing there's acting there's me dancing and the other three girls dancing i write storylines based on the research so in this case i did the research for four little girls that happened in 1963 in Birmingham, Alabama, and I take from the research 
what elements I think would enhance student learning, uh, what elements would help them understand the, the thought processes and the condition of that time and how it affects them today. Basically, I didn't really know about this until they brought up the performance. I never knew about any four little girls or anything about the bombing. So it basically just taught me about some history of mine. I am one of the oldest sisters of Denise McNair, and we're supposed to be kind of like overprotective over her. And we are just dancing in the first part, but it's actually telling a story in the dance about how they were bombing and how they found them in Nepal. And basically at the end, after they die, we basically rise up and turn into little angels. This show is different from others that I've been involved in because it's a true life story. We're telling these, this four little girl's story. This is something that actually happened. And it's important that we portray that to the best of our abilities here. As in other shows, it's more, I've been in a lot of musicals, so it's more like fantastical and a lot of songs. But this is, we get down to the truth of what actually happened. At this production, I'm the assistant to the director, which means I help organize the cast, organize the rehearsals, write down notes of what happened in the rehearsal, and anything that Dr. Clark needs me to do, I'm his right-hand person. We only have one main rehearsal when everyone is together. The 140 uh, students and participants come together one Saturday from 9 to 5. And then that's when the first time anybody sees the stage, first time anyone sees the set, first time they hear sound, lighting, everything happened on one Saturday. This is one of the best casts I've ever worked in. They understand what we're trying to portray in the show, and they, they want to do it. This is their history, and they understand that. So they have the best understanding of what could ever happen. And I'm so thankful for this experience of getting to work in this theater with the cast, with Dr. Clark especially. He's an amazing person. He's done so much for me as like growing as a director. It's just been the best experience. In Four Little Girls, I'm Carol Robertson. I'm one of the youngest girls in the church bombing. And I'm supposed to be like portraying um, Denise McNair's like best friend in this and how they go through the whole experience. I learned more about the history of it because I, I knew that there was a bombing but I didn't know to what extent the damages caused and like I just learned more about the history. Um, the best part of the role was working with our dance teacher because we got to like experience new ways of like moving. We got to see her outside of the classroom and more like as a person, as a teacher. Doing this like gives you more experience on stage because it shows you that a lot of things can go wrong, but then the show will end up being like something that you didn't expect. So you kind of have to go in with the mindset of something's going to go wrong, so when nothing goes wrong, you're like surprised, like, okay, that was really good. I play Denise McNair, the youngest of the four little girls. She is the youngest, and she, she, I think she's the one that got the worst damage, one of the worst damages. The story is about hatred and the racism that happened back then. It was more difficult because I had to act more instead of just dancing. I have choirs on stage, we have uh, people speaking on stage, soloists, we have live musicians on stage, and uh, we're just trying to get all of that uh, into our sound system. All right now we're running two channels from the computer for our uh, playback for our sound effects. We're running uh, six wireless microphones and uh, two to three corded microphones. Saturday was our first tech rehearsal and then yesterday uh, was our second. So, And today is our first uh, full dress rehearsal and uh, technically our last. <laughs> it's a short turnaround. For this show, I am running the light board and I go to different cues when I'm asked to. To go to different cues, you have to press the go button and just in case, like if we're in rehearsals and we need to go back, you just press this button. And then to go to any random queue you want to go to, you press the go to button and you type in whichever key you want to go to. And then you press enter and it just jumps to that queue. The stage manager has to read off the script during the show and then call all the queues. I basically 
run the whole show and call all the cues, make sure everything happens on time and happens right. Um, and I just go off the script and call everything to everybody. We had about two rehearsals this time. Usually we have about a week, but this one was a little bit shorter. It, um, we just didn't have as much time to kind of perfect everything, but I think it'll be okay. The march is still going on for various reasons, for all kinds of reasons, for religious reasons even. You know, people are still in the fight to try to figure out how can we get a piece of this or how can we be as equal as anybody else. And, and it's not just black rights at this time. It's also white rights. It's also gay rights. It's also uh, uh, our veterans, uh, military people, their rights. It's also handicapped people, their rights. It's also animal rights. I mean, we're on the front line today very much like the 1960s in our own different ways. There's marches, there's races, there's runs, all kinds of, of, of uh, uh, events that occurs to help people just be human and just be equal. But the message would be everybody is involved. Everybody, it's not just a black issue. That's it for this edition of Spectrum of the Arts. Thank you for being with us. I'm Jonathan Ogle and we'll see you next time.